Okay guys, so now we're going to move on to what does the EEG signal actually look like? Or at least what do my cartoon drawings of it look like? Um, and we're going to begin by talking about the five main frequencies measured by EEG in what each frequency we think represents. Now, to begin with, it's important to note that brain activity oscillates. That means that it is rhythmic the way that the neurons fire. They fire um, either very fast in rhythm or very slow in rhythm. If any of you guys have ever had a fan that you can control to spin around at different settings, either slow or fast, it's the same way in the brain. The brains will either oscillate or fire quickly or more slowly. And importantly, the part of the brain and the speed of the oscillations of their rhythmic firing tells us something about what the brain is doing. So, the brain fi has five main frequencies at which it oscillates. The first is going to be delta. And what you're going to see here on the left is you're going to see the name of the five main frequencies, delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma. And then you're going to see what they look like, each represented by a different color, over the course of one second. So imagine this is one second of brain activity that we're recording with the EEG here. What you'll notice with delta is it makes a complete cycle only here about one and a half times per second. And that's about right. Delta is going to be from one to three hertz per second. Hertz can be abbreviated HZ. Hertz like the rental car company. Okay, And that's just a measure of how many times something moves per second. So delta is going to be one to three cycles per second, one to three rhythmic firings per second. The second slowest one is going to be theta. And you'll notice that theta here we can see has about three and a half cycles. Theta is going to be somewhere usually between about four and seven cycles per second, or four to seven hertz. Next in red, we have alpha, and alpha is going to be a little bit faster than theta here. Alpha is going to cycle anywhere between about 8 and 12 hertz per second. Faster still, we have beta, which is going to go from about 13 to 30 hertz. And then finally, gamma, which is going to be greater than 30 hertz. Now, importantly, the brain activity, neurons are actually firing at these things, uh, these different um, oscillation rates at the same time. So what we can do is we can actually add these together. So if you take delta, plus theta, plus alpha, plus beta, plus gamma, you get your total EEG signal. And this would be actually what the signal looks like that we see on the computer while we're monitoring your brain activity with EEG. And what you'll notice with this total EEG signal here is that you can kind of see the delta in here. You see how there's kind of this slow part of this wave? Then you can also kind of see the fast, like beta and gamma part. You see how riding on top of those slow waves, you can see some uh, gamma and beta, some fast little peaks. So that's how all of these oscillations sum together. And importantly, what EEG researchers are often interested in is trying to dis determine how much of this EEG signal, of that total signal, is made up of delta. How much of it is made up of theta? how much of it is made up of alpha, how much of it is made up of beta, and how much of it is made up of gamma. 
And by determining how much each of those frequency bands is in the total signal, we can learn something about what the brain is doing. Another way to think about this is to imagine that you are going to take all of these markers here and I want you to imagine that each of these markers represents a frequency that the brain is firing at and that shouldn't be too hard to imagine since we have the color-coded frequencies here and I'm going to take these markers and I'm just going to scribble like this if I'm an EEG researcher, what I would try to do is I would try to say, okay, how much of this is orange? In other words, beta. How much of this is brown? In other words, delta. And so on and so forth. And that's the same idea with what EEG researchers do when they look at this total EEG signal, is they do some fancy math to try to determine how much of that signal is made up of each of the bandwidths we talked about. So, what does each of the bandwidths mean then? Well, beginning with delta, delta is typically associated with um, states of drowsiness. Theta is typically associated with cognitive control. So, in theta activity, what you might see is if someone makes a mistake while they're doing a, an experiment on the computer, while they're doing a task on the computer for the researcher, if the participant makes a mistake, oftentimes you'll see a lot of theta activity because they'll try to pay more attention or control their thinking a little bit more so they don't mess up in the future. Alpha activity is associated with inhibiting or suppressing information. So let's say for example that you're doing a task on a computer where you have to pay attention to the left side of the screen. What you would see then in your brain is you would see a lot of alpha activity in the part of the brain that's associated with the right side of the screen. Because the alpha activity is helping your brain block out everything that's irrelevant for the task. Beta activity is, it its meaning is dependent upon where it's occurring, but one common place you'll see beta is over sensory motor cortex, so over the center of the scalp, so electrodes right up on top here and in the middle. And what you'll often see is when someone is preparing a movement, you'll see beta activity reduce. We actually think that the level of dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that drives movement, we actually think that the level of dopamine, if it increases, that's going to cause beta to go down. So beta activity is often going to be associated with preparing to act, preparing to move. Um, finally, gamma activity. We're oftentimes going to see gamma activity over sensory regions of the brain. So, for example, we might see gamma activity um, in the back of the scalp where our visual cortex is or more on the temporal area where our uh, auditory cortex is. And gamma activity is often associated with uh, sensory processing. So, trying to um, collect and interpret information related to sound or sight, for example. So now you guys know what the five main frequencies are, and you know a bit about what they represent. And, importantly, you know why EEG researchers work so hard to record a signal and then break it down to try to figure out the different frequencies influence on that signal.